Now, let me ask you a couple of questions, uh, Brother Jesse. Um, the first one is this. Um, with the, you know, with Paris, Texas, there's a long history of racial violence that has taken place there. Can you explain that? Because, I mean, it seems like that, that town was in the news along with the Gina, Louisiana, not too long ago for some other stuff that was kind of, you know, questionable, other than this dragging death. Right. Well, actually, that history actually goes further even back there. When we first got involved um, with this case, something that was told to myself and Brother Derek when we first went out to the scene of the crime of uh, the murder of Brother Brandon was that they told us to go look inside the book, The Hundred Years of Lynching. And they said, if when you look in that book, The Hundred Years of Lynching, you will find the city of Paris, Texas, all over that book. And I actually was in New Orleans after that, and I went and rebought that book because I didn't have it in my possession. And when I looked in the index, brother, Paris, Texas is all over that for lynching of black people. So that's first where it started. But now, as people were today, it just wasn't just about Brandon, but there were several people who went up before the crowd to talk about the injustice of uh, improper arrest. You're talking about the first killings that have been done where white folks have gotten away with it. And the thing about it is, is that, brother, that this has shown, just like with Gina, that these small types of things that are going on in these small towns are now being exposed. Of course, you had the big case of, of Shawanda Cotton that was so um, so horrendous. They got national and international attention. So Paris, Texas... Well, what, what happened with Shawanda the, Cotton for our listeners, for people who aren't what, familiar? Right, well, she was given this excessive time... Um, potential to serve time in jail for pushing a white hall monitor at school. Just crazy, but at the same time, it was a white girl, I believe, that did some arson and she got some slap on the wrist at the same time in Paris, Texas. So she wanted kind of, at first, giving this outrageous um, sentence in jail for pushing a so- so-called pushing a white hall monitor at school. But there was a white girl who set something on fire, did arson, and got a slap on the wrist. But she wanted kind of, her actual mother was actually out there at the rally today as well. This is uh, this is crazy. You know, um, what do you think is going on? Is there a larger picture going on? Is this a backlash to having a black president? Is there an agenda? Because we're hearing all these racial incidents popping up all around the country. Um, a lot of them involving the neo Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan. In recent days, or rec- over the past couple of years, have been focused on. Uh, our Mexican and Latino brothers and sisters in the borders of Texas and Arizona in particular. But now we're starting to see all this questionable stuff, especially with the uh, large number of black men being shot by police over the p- since the beginning of this year. Is there something else going on? Is w- What's your take on this? And I absolutely would say that. You know, I heard Minister Farrakhan say, it's been stated by us as well, that President Obama has received more threats on his life than all of the other presidents combined. So therefore, there's threats on his life. That means that there's a, a sect of people who are definitely dissatisfied with him being in president. But now I think we're living in a time where the masquerade is over, brother. The masks are now being taken off because these people are upset because they feel like their country has been taken from them. They said that the Demo- when the Democrats took over in the House, that, that now that the, the country's been taken from them, but now to see a black man reign to the top, uh, the pinnacle of leadership in this country, yes, they're upset. So now what is happening is that rage, that anger that they were able to contain on certain levels now, they can't contain it no more and they can't help themselves. You know, there were troopers and FBI agents and other cover agents out there filming us and taking pictures and stuff, you know, because they're trying to see who we are. And I think that what is happening, brother, the masquerade is over. So the bigger picture is, as Minister Farrakhan has been saying this, man, for years, brother, is that this move to totally wipe out our people and move out on our people, they are now positioning themselves. And what better reason and what better motivation is to have a black man as president than to say, you know what, it's over for us. Let's not go all out. So I think as we look, not that I think, but I know, this racial tension is only going to increase. And for all our people who are sitting comfortably in our homes, don't want to get involved on a level, I'm sure sooner or later this stuff is going to be at your door and we're all going to be forced to say something and get involved because it's not going to stop this tasing, this racial profiling, this improper jelly, the beating of our young people, tasing black women. You're seeing it on YouTube. 
been doing this stuff in the open, on tape, and getting away with it. They do not care anymore. So it's all season. It's all our season. It's not just the white skin color, but it can also be those that uh, look like us but got their mindset.